Thank you, Madam President. I move that the foregoing recommendations and conference committee report on House File Number 470 be now adopted and that the bill be repassed as amended by the conference committee. To that motion, Senator Limmer. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, uh, House File 470 is the Judiciary and Public Safety Omnibus Budget. As many of you know, this is the second omnibus budget bill for the Judicial Branch, the Department of Corrections, the Criminal Justice Divisions of the Department of Public Safety, and a number of smaller departments and boards. The current general fund spending for this area for fiscal year 2016 and 17 is $2.17 billion. Uh, the uh, governor recommended an increase of approximately $265 million, nearly a 12% increase. And the Senate started out with a $59 million increase above, or above base. I'm happy to tell you that the total general fund budget for the biennium in this conference committee report is $2.3,168,000,000 over base. And at the same time, the bill makes no cuts to any department or board. If you're wondering about pensions, they are going to be covered elsewhere. Uh, there are some notable budget provisions that I'd like to share with you. Uh, salary increases for the courts will be two and a half and two and a half each year. That's totaling $19.5 million. And all other agencies, which would include a total of 39, little over $39 million, would be at two to two plus percent each year. Department of Corrections and most of DPS is at the Governor Dayton's request, including some of the Department of Corrections steps. Funding for new FTEs is included in the public defense attorney uh, at one and a half million dollars, guardian ad litem compliance with federal mandates, a million, and a civil legal services is at $500,000. I might add that the civil legal services is a little low uh, for my comfort level, but regardless of that, the relationship between the House and the Senate uh, could not go too much further with the uh, limitations that we had. Uh, also, um, we also include grants for sex trafficking investigations, terrorism recruitment prevention, public safety training for veterans in crisis, and sentencing alternatives totaling 1.4 million. Uh, we also include uh, a Senate provision for $6.6 .6 million to reduce court civil filing and motion fees. Uh, the governor's proposal of two new judge units and mandated services uh, were retained by the Senate position. Uh, these are new judge units that are going into North Central and Northwest Minnesota. I believe the judicial districts are number seven and nine. Uh, Bureau of Criminal Apprehension Ag Agents, Firearm Examiners, Drug Laboratory Chemists, and Criminal History System Maintenance Staff uh, totaled $2.7 million and $360,000 for alcohol and gambling agents. We also agreed uh, with the BCA's Predatory Offender Registration registry replacement at $4.1 million for 2018 and 19. $9.2 million in current fiscal year 2017 for a Department of Corrections deficiency for offender health care costs. These, and, and then there was also $11 million for fiscal year 2018 Department of Corrections offender health contract. These two items really were uh, quite a difficulty when we first started out with our $59 million uh, increase that we received as a Senate body. But um, I'm glad to say that they not only were met, but we also uh, moved the new base up by $168 million. Uh, we also recognized the tremendous need in probation services throughout the state of Minnesota, uh, totaling $6.3 million and an additional $300,000 for sex offender treatment. 
And we also recognized finally from 1999 to 2002 a need of Roseau County disaster fund that was not covered by FEMA when they had uh, flooding in that general area. This was an area that was not covered by FEMA and we were able to cover half of that at $1.25 million for the Roseau County area. The original Senate position included no policy, as you may remember, uh, but the uh, House provision had over 60 pages of expanded policy. Uh, we, considered, uh, we considered them all, but we did not accept them all. Some of the items that we did, we did accept was a harassment restraining order short form and peace officer service of progress. That will be a one-year delay before it begins due to uh, financial issues. Department of Corrections is required to evaluate the Appleton Prison. This is compromise language uh, with the governor. Peace officer carry, which is allowing current licensed peace officers to carry their weapon off duty while in stadiums and other places of public accommodation are included in this bill. The extension of a driving diversion program, that's a pilot project, has been extended two more years. And we also included a prohibition barring DPS from using rulemaking or changing rules related to issuing driver licenses. There's also other provisions that were in the bill but are no longer in the bill. Well, it, I think that came in the House language. These were provisions that are no longer in the bill that we did not accept in the final draft. The seatbelt gag rule is not included in this bill. The civil judgment interest rate that, that's lowered for pre and post judgment awards is not in this bill. Increased penalties, the freeway protester bill is not in this bill. And the clawback language requested by a number of nonprofit organizations in light of the Petters case has been removed from the bill. Other areas of controversy due to what we deemed as not adequately vetted were subjects that included sex offender enhanced penalties, predatory offender registration additions, certain driver penalty enhancements, and uh, again, these were, these were positions that either stakeholders pointed out a, uh, uh, an inadequacy to address the issues, or for that matter, they just were not, we didn't have time to adequately vet them, uh, so we kept them off the bill. I wanted to mention uh, something about appropriations as amended by this second conference committee, this bill, I believe, is as near or getting nearer to being balanced. It has no cuts to any department or board, which I believe is very important for public safety and access to the courts. The Department of Correction Offender Healthcare is constitutionally required, although there is a lawsuit currently pending on this very issue and that takes up a large portion of the new spending together with employee health care needs and current employee salary increases. New FTEs are all meant to keep the criminal justice and court system running effectively, and I think we uh, were, were uh, effective in making that known during the, the uh, conference committee. Reform of civil court filing fees are still included in this bill. However, they have uh, resulted in a little less dollar amount than what we originally had hoped to get. Uh, that was uh, a product of compromise. This bill now reduces them by a small amount. This will affect all Minnesotans, including families and small businesses. Those are people who need access to justice and due process and it allows them a little easier chance of having their day in court by reducing some of these preliminary fees that are required to bring their case before a judge. 
On policy, uh, there are, as I mentioned, a number of policies that we finally did accept. These mostly were issues uh, that we uh, did address in the Judiciary Committee. Uh, and there were a few standalone bills that we also considered as well. The, mini the HRO, or Harassment Restraining Order, uh, short form, is supported by law enforcement and victim rights advocates. This allows local police officers to deliver harassment restraining orders where before only sheriff departments could do so. The um, University of Northwestern was the number one nonprofit uh, organization that was interested in the clawback provision that was um, to prevent by a certain number of years uh, a clawback from being uh, issued by the courts. This goes back to 2011 or 2012. We did address this before. There was a district court judge in Hennepin County that believes that that provision a number of years ago uh, still allowed uh, a small toehold for a plaintiff to uh, seek its original damages. Uh, after uh, a great deal of discussion and involvement with a discussion with the governor's office, uh, it was ultimately decided to withdraw that provision from the bill. Uh, there was also a discussion about the Appleton prison. Uh, the original language uh, included or required the Department of Corrections Commissioner to enter into immediately uh, negotiations with the owners of the Appleton prison to either purchase or lease the property immediately. Uh, we thought that that was just a little too fast and perhaps not even needed. And so we, uh, we changed that language uh, significantly. The uh, governor, uh, per a government agreement, as I mentioned before, the seatbelt gag rule is no longer uh, in the bill. Judgment interest rates, freeway protest penalties, and the Petters clawback policy are no longer in the bill. I know the bill is uh, much more expansive than what I have described it as, but uh, I'm sure you have uh, had reviews on the bill, and I would be willing to stand for any questions or further discussion, Madam President. Senator Matthews. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to impose a call of the Senate for the duration of this bill. Senate is under call. Senator Matthews. Thank you, Madam President. I move that further proceedings under the roll call be dispensed with and the sergeant at arms be instructed to bring in absent members. On that motion, all in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no, the motion is adopted. <laughs> further discussion, Senator Latz. Uh, Madam President, I had really hoped to be able to support this bill. Um, and uh, I worked very hard in the Judiciary Committee on the policy side and, and uh, in support of the budget side to try to come up with a bill that um, I thought uh, I'd be able to support. And uh, there are some good things in this bill. There are some good budget provisions. And uh, there's some good policy in this bill. But there's some glaring holes in the budget, and there's uh, one really big clinker of policy. And so I'm afraid I'm not able to do that. 
Uh, Madam President, there's a budget gimmick in this bill where the offender health care uh, increase that is projected to be needed to pay for the care of our offenders in the prisons is funded for the first year of the biennium, but not at all for the second year. It's as if we are pretending in order to make the budget balance that the offenders aren't going to need that level of health care services in the second year. On top of that, the deficiency for 2017 offender health care is in this bill rather than in a separate deficiency bill. The Public Defender's Office is not adequately funded. Uh, when I became chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee four years ago, we set the Public Defender's Office on a six-year path to bring them up to national standards. We fulfilled uh, the first biennium and the second biennium of that path, but this bill does nothing to move them forward toward that third year. So unfortunately, they are going to fall short on that path, and as a result, their constitutional mandate to assist, to represent uh, defendants in the criminal justice system is going to suffer. Uh, Madam President, there's no additional funding in here for youth intervention programs, the long-term prevention programs, identifying and helping youth before they become members of the criminal justice system. There's inadequate funding in here for our civil legal services system that can only now assist two out of every five applicants who are financially eligible for their services. They walk in the door, they qualify, and they have to be turned away because they simply don't have the resources for civil legal services. The Violent Crimes Task Force asked for an additional $2 million of funding. They don't get any additional funding. These are the task forces that go after the, uh, the drug offenders, the violent offenders in our communities. There's no additional service, uh, funding for mental health services in our prisons. Inadequate funding to meet the statutory state and federal mandates for the guardian ad litem. That's in our juvenile system uh, and in family court. The Prison Rape Elimination Act, a federal mandate, is only half funded, leaving our prison population at risk. There is no money in here for restrictive housing reform, for the solitary confinement uh, issues that we have in our prisons. And it requires staffing to break out of that mold, and there's not any money directed toward addressing that issue. There's no money to provide the additional necessary medical and nursing services in our prisons. There is no money to deal with the offender case management system. Community corrections, uh, the expansion of our programs to take care of our offenders, supervise our offenders after they leave prison is only two-thirds funded uh, compared to the governor's request. And let's face it, members, 95% of the prisoners are going to leave prison. They're going to go into our community, and we want them to be adequately supervised so that they can remain safe, compliant with the rules and regulations of society and of their conditions of release. We are all safer when they have better uh, oversight, and that is not adequately funded. The Disaster Contingency Fund gets zero to replenish its account. Uh, we are going to be living on a hope and a prayer in the next nine months or so that we don't have a disaster that's going to use up the reserve that's already in that account. And while there's a provision in there to recapture $10 million of any, 4K, any surplus that happens to be available in September, right now we are running below forecast in our receipts, so the likelihood of being able to recapture the amount that's necessary to replenish the disaster contingency fund is very, very low. Why do we have these holes in our budget? Because the target was not adequate to meet the need. The target that was created by the majority in the Senate and the majority in the House was not adequate to meet the needs that I have described. And the reason for that inadequate target is the majority's fixation on an excessive 
tax refund or rebate in Minnesota. And I understand the argument that the people are better able to decide how to spend their money for the betterment of society if we give it back to them than government could possibly decide on behalf of the people. But I can tell you unequivocally that you aren't going to find anyone who gets a tax refund if they were to get a rebate check or a refund check in the mail where they actually had the check in front of them and they knew exactly what they got or they're going to sit down and calculate at the end of the year after withholding is done and they complete their returns, they calculate how much fewer taxes they paid that year compared to the previous year. They're not going to decide, oh, I'm going to take that extra money, I'm going to write out a check to the Public Defender's Office or the Board of Public Defense for the State of Minnesota because I want to make sure they have adequate funding to, to represent our criminal defendants. And they're not going to say, oh, I'm going to write out a check to civil legal services, or I'm going to write out a check to youth intervention, or I'm going to write out a check to violent crimes task force, or I'm going to write out a check to the Department of Corrections so they can deal with the solitary confinement issue. They're not going to do it. And that's not to say they're going to do bad things with their money, but they don't have the capability, the capacity, uh, the, uh, the big picture, um, or uh, the, uh, uh, the foresight, in many cases, to decide they want to make a voluntary contribution to government so the government can take care of the business of the people that government is designed and exists to take care of. If that were not sufficient, members, there are some problematic policy provisions in this bill. Uh, I still believe that there is no reason and no need to have any language regarding the Appleton Prison uh, in this bill. It's just one more instance of uh, economic development uh, desires driving criminal justice and corrections policy evaluation. The bill mandates an expenditure of a private evaluation to determine what can or could be done with the existing privately owned prison uh, in Appleton. And quite frankly, members, for all we know, by the time the money is gone and that cost-benefit analysis is finished, that prison will be back in use housing the federal prisoners that it used to house, in which case the entire exercise will have been a waste of time and money. There's also a provision in here relating to peace officers' ability to carry firearms into private establishments, and in particular into establishments like stadiums where we have large games with uh, mass gatherings of people and risk for terrorist attacks and very limited ability for the people in charge of the security of those facilities to vet those who claim to be peace officers when they attempt to enter the facility uh, with a firearm and ammunition and very limited ability to not only to stop them, to make sure they are who they say they are, that they aren't presenting a fake ID, and no ability to ask them uh, where they're sitting, so internal security operations in those facilities like the U.S. Bank Stadium at the Super Bowl would know who's carrying a firearm inside the stadium lawfully. But most importantly, members, we have a provision in this bill that will make it more difficult to make our highways safe for all of us who will drive home at the end of the session, for our families who are driving to and from school or swimming practice or music lessons, for the grandparents taking their grandchildren out to breakfast, for the families going to church or synagogue or mosque for religious services. The fact is, members, whether we like it or not, we are, have in our midst people who are not lawful residents of the United States. And they go by various monikers. I'm not going to list them. We all know who we're talking about. What we also know, whether we care to admit it or not, is that they drive on our roads, on our highways. They drive because they're working here and they need to get to their jobs. They're washing our dishes, they're shingling our roofs, they're landscaping our yards, they're helping with our dry cleaning. They're doing all sorts of jobs 
And they do so gladly, knowing that they are in a country as great as ours. And whether we agree or disagree with whether or not they should stay in the country, whether they should be rounded up and deported, uh, whether they should be given a pathway to citizenship, whether state police or local police officers ought to be expending resources to enforce federal immigration law or not. The fact is they're here and they are driving. They're taking their kids to games. They're picking them up from school. They're going to work. They're going to the doctor's office. And if they are driving without a driver's license, then you and I are less safe and our families are less safe on those highways because they have not been screened for the ability to drive safely. They have not been educated on the formal rules of the road. They have not been verified with a behind-the-wheel instruction from a trained educator instructor to make sure that they know how to operate a two- or three- or four-ton vehicle that can travel at 60 or 80 or 100 miles per hour on the roads. They do not know the rules of the road as well as they should, and they are most likely to not carry insurance. So in the event that they get into a crash, the person that they hit will have less recourse, will suffer financially in addition to suffering medically if they survive the crash. Last I checked, the Senate Judiciary Committee also had the name public safety in it. It is our first and foremost responsibility to attempt to secure the safety of the public in Minnesota. It is demonstrable and clear that people drive more safely if they are licensed to do so. And the provision in this bill will prohibit the Department of Public Safety from taking any steps toward licensing these individuals who are not lawfully residents of our country, but are in fact residents of our country. And whatever moral arguments you wish to make, it is incontrovertible that your self-interest is better served by having safe, licensed, and insured drivers on the road. This provision that's in the bill is short-sighted, is contrary to the values of public safety that we have sworn an oath to advance. And for that reason, along with the financial deficiencies in this bill, I think that this bill is not ready to be enacted into law. It should not be presented to the governor for signature and that we should return it to the conference committee for review and revision and in particular for deletion of that uh, driver's license provision. So, Madam President, I move that the recommendations and conference committee report on House File 470 be rejected and that the bill be re-referred to the conference committee as formally constituted for further consideration. And, a roll call. and I ask for a roll call. Roll call has been requested. Roll call granted to the motion. Senator Dibble. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, Madam President and members, uh, I support the motion to uh, return House File 470 to the conference committee uh, to reject this conference committee report. Um, Senator Latz uh, out enumerated a, a number of deficiencies in the bill, but uh, ended with uh, what I think is, is the most important point. Uh, if you look on uh, page 30, line 22, section 5, uh, with the paragraph titled Rulemaking Limitation, uh, Madam President, uh, this is language uh, similar to which uh, was rejected by this body uh, when we heard the Real ID Bill. Uh, and in fact, uh, a few days ago when the Real ID Bill was brought back to this chamber for final vote and passage, uh, it received the vast majority, I think 60 votes, I think, or something like that, because um, we had taken our stand uh, as a body uh, to reject the inclusion of unnecessary and controversial language that had nothing to do with Real ID and took a gratuitous swipe 
uh, at members of our community, hardworking people, people who participate in our workplaces and in our economy, uh, people who are raising their family, people without whom uh, Minnesota would be a very different place and not nearly as successful. And also, um, we know that, as Senator Latz uh, very well articulated, um, if in fact we were at some point ever, ever, ever able to overcome uh, the rules uh, that exist in state law prohibiting the extension of driver's license to those without uh, legal documented presence in our state, uh, in fact, uh, it would be in all of our interest because public safety uh, would be enhanced uh, and lives uh, would be much, much more stable and people would not be pushed to the margins, uh, keeping themselves safer, their children safer, and us safer. Uh, and uh, Madam President, this, this element, I believe, is totally out of step and out of keeping uh, with the underlying premise of the rest of the bill, public safety, as Senator Latz articulated. Uh, and um, as I said before, uh, it's just kind of stuck into this bill for, for no good reason. It solves no problem. The existing law and rule is what it is. Um, uh, it solves no problem. It's a gratuitous swipe at members of our community, many of which look a lot different than almost everyone in this chamber, I'll add. Uh, Madam President, uh, there is an argument that somehow we have to codify uh, what's in rule, uh, because otherwise uh, well, the Department of Public Safety is going to uh, um, act on its own. Uh, I, I don't think uh, that's the case, even though they did act on their own initiative to, uh, to uh, install these rules in the, in the first place. Um, Madam President, this is a uh, a deeply troubling provision. It marginalizes people, many of whom are our friends and our neighbors that we love and that we care about. This is not what we're here to do. This is not what we're called to do. We're called to aspire to greater things and to be better people and to be gracious and extend, extend ourselves. Um, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm disappointed. It feels cynical. It feels opportunistic. Uh, it feels um, it feels out of keeping and out of step with what we're trying to achieve as a Senate and as a state. It's profoundly disappointing, but importantly to the to the motion, we've rejected this idea as a chamber. Um, it comes back in conference, um, and it's contrary uh, to I think what we're trying to pursue as a matter and function of policy. I support the motion. Senator Herr. Uh, Madam President, I uh, also rise to support the motion of Senator Lance, and um, mainly, mainly because of the provision that restrict driver license for all people. Uh, this provision is a virus, a virus that will be harmful for our clean a real ID bill that we just passed. Um, let's return this bill to, to the conference and it won't take long. It's just a matter of crossing off, off this provision. And I may join the majority in voting for uh, the bill as a whole. And this topic has been talked about so many times when we have the real ID bill on the floor here and we have developed a clean real ID bill passing out from the floor here. And what are, we, what are we to fear? What are we to fear? When I think about the word fear, I would, it takes me back to thinking about the word of uh, FDR. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. What are we to fear when we are a country with principle, good moral? What are we to fear when we are a country of law and orders? And what are we to fear when we are a state of compassion, especially Minnesota, is among one of the state with compassion, I, and, I, and I love it so much. And I don't say this uh, with complacency. I say this because I believe in the principle uh, of this country, the law that governs this country, and the compassion that we have here in the, our state. So I ask, 
I ask the uh, member of Senate to join hands together and hold our Senate position and send this bill back to conference. Thank you, Madam President. Senator Torres Ray. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I rise in support of this motion, and thank you, Senator Latz, for presenting this motion. I agree that the Senate has worked very hard to take this provision out of the public safety provisions that we've had in the past, and we work very hard with Real ID. We knew that we had the language we needed to do, that to put in place in order to allow people to travel safely, safely, and we work hard to get there. This is a provision that came from the House. We work hard not to include it in the final decision, and I applaud the efforts of the committee that worked on that. I believe that we can do the same now. Driver's licenses are a matter of public safety, and we can really work on public safety today. Members, I would like to let you know that the uninsurance rates will increase if we don't provide licenses for people. So we need practical solutions. Issuing driver's licenses will not increase or decrease illegal immigration, which is the fear that many members have. 14 states already issue driver's licenses for undocumented people, and they have not seen an influx, a greater influx of undocumented people coming into their states. In fact, they have better records of people who are driving in the streets today. So from a public safety perspective, it is the right decision. 13 million people live within our borders today without proper documentation. Many of these people are only asking for a document to be able to go to work every day. And like Senator Ladd says, in many jobs that many people don't even want. 14 states have made this decision and they are doing it for public, reason, public safety reasons, and they are succeeding. Members, I am asking you today to support this motion and to clean this language. I, too, would like to vote for this bill. I think Senator Limmer and others have worked very hard to increase funding for public safety for the courts, and I applaud this effort, Senator Latz. You also have worked very hard to get us here. I will be proud to vote for this bill, given the opportunity. But I cannot vote for this bill today because of this provision. So all we're asking members is to return this bill, to strike this language out, and bring it back so that we can have bipartisan support sending this bill to the governor for a signature. Thank you. Senator Marty. Madam President, thank you. I, too, support Senator Latz's motion to send the bill back, and as several have mentioned, particularly troubled by the provision on page 30 about the, the provision about the rules related to driver's licenses, and I think that this is a provision that will, if anything, lead to keeping us less safe as a society, not more safe, which we would hope our public safety bill does. But I also want to comment about the fact that Senator Limmer did started out his bill several months ago with a very good job. I think it was the one budget bill here that did not have policy in it. There are now over 20 such policy provisions, some of which are maybe good provisions, some of which, like this one, I think Senator Dibble pointed out, it doesn't solve anything to have this provision in the bill. It doesn't change anything from where we are now. So it seems to me that we should recognize the Constitution requires bills be of a single subject. This is a budget bill. We've all talked about it, where many of us would like to support it, but with this particular policy provision, with these policy provisions in there, we're gumming up the works on it. We've been continuing to do that all session. I urge us to send it back and at least pull that provision out of the bill. I'd like to see there are several other ones. I'm not sure. The way they're worded, it seems to me to be pretty strange. Um, I know the one with the, related to the Super Bowl where law enforcement, you can ask them for their identification, but the way I read it, there's no way to keep the person out even if they say they're a cop and they do not have credentials. 
Um, I think those are provisions that deserve more thought, they deserve more discussion, and we should deal with them in separate bills. So I urge you to support Senator Latz's motion and to pull out at least the provision on page 30. Senator Kent. Thank you, Madam President. I also rise to support uh, Senator Latz's motion and along the same uh, thoughts that have been expressed by others, but I want to add um, a little more insight into this issue. And fundamentally, it goes to the point that this is a public safety bill, but by including this provision that is in page 30 that has to do with um, uh, driver's license rules, um, we will, in fact, be making Minnesotans less safe in terms of public safety. Um, one of the benefits of having licensed drivers is that we know they are skilled and knowledgeable and they're required to pass a test to demonstrate it. We've talked about uh, uh, what that means in terms of insured drivers and uninsured drivers. I've had the opportunity to work on uh, a task force that looks at this issue and it is, a, it is an issue that, that affects Minnesotans and affects our insurance prices. But I also want to point to research that was done by some um, researchers in, at Stanford University in California after California implemented their uh, new driver's license policy. And what they discovered was that, yes, in fact, these, their new driver's license policy of making sure that everyone driving on California roads uh, had access to a driver's license, in fact, increased public safety. And they specifically cited um, prevention of hit and run accidents, um, savings of out-of-pocket costs, and uh, the way the cost got tra uh, transferred to driver's insurance. So, there is research that has been done that shows that these policies make us more safe. That is why this provision is not appropriate in a public safety bill, and I would encourage members to support the LATS amendment. Senator Hayden. Well, thank you, uh, Madam President, and I know that we have uh, heard all of the reasons from uh, the great members that are here. I, too, rise to support the LATS amendment to um, send this back uh, to conference, and um, I have all the respect in the world uh, uh, to Senator Limmer and know how arduous of a job it was to negotiate this bill uh, with the House of Representatives and, um, and all of the things that they brought to the table, and so I want to commend him in being able to try to parse through those things and really get uh, down, as we would say, where I grew up to the nitty-gritty of what we need to do. Uh, but this is one provision that is wrong, and I represent um, a district that uh, has a, a lot of folks that uh, could use a driver's license. I have hard-working immigrant people who live in my district who work every single day, often two and three jobs, uh, often their ability to be able to get to one job to another to provide for their family, often they don't and are not eligible for any other benefits. They are just working hard. Uh, and their inability to have a driver's license really impedes their ability to make a living. It really impedes their ability to do the things that they need. Uh, we have heard all of the research in other states. Uh, we understand the public safety aspect of it. We understand that with the driver's license, you can then get insurance. We have spent a lot of time on this floor talking about insurance and, and what that means. We are, we are adversely affecting the insurance market because we have people who can't get a driver's license, thus they can't get insurance, and if something happens to them, they can't pay for it. They're not paying into it, not because they don't want to, because they can't, because we're not letting them. We have seen, even in the House, Representative Hamilton has been passionate about this. He's a greater Minnesota member, he's a farmer, passionate about this issue. So I know uh, that this is something that we've talked about on this House floor over and over again. When we look at our young people, when we look at the folks that we call millennials, they are for this. No matter how they got here, no matter what happened, this is something that they want. They don't distinguish between the two. We have to start to figure that out. We have to, Madam President, we have to, as they say, get with the times. We cannot sit here and think that somehow, because we sit in St. Paul and we decide who's going to get a license and not, that people aren't going to drive, that people aren't going to work, that people aren't going to take care of their families. If we want those things to happen, if we want those folks to be a part of this 
society, which they are, if we don't want them to hide in the shadows, then what, what we should do is send this back, strip out this provision, and move forward. Madam President, I have a provision in this bill that I think is really good. It is about nuisance crimes and the ability for us to talk to people who go to certain geographic areas over and over and cause mayhem and do things that they shouldn't. And often these are the people that they're victimizing because they know that they don't always have the protection of just even having a driver's license to say who they are. I will vote for this bill if Senator Limmer would take this bill back, strip out this provision, and move forward. It's not a perfect bill, but it moves forward. And I want to respect the great work that Senator Limmer, Senator Latz, and all those on the conference committee has done. But to slide this in, to pull this out a real idea, and then to poke it in here, we've seen this before. This happened to us late in the night yesterday when we had provisions in other bills in which we slide them in. We saw this with Senator Osmick's bill when Senator Latz said, he couldn't find any other way to get small sales, so he stuck it in a bill. That isn't the way that we work. That's not, the set, that's not the, what the majority campaigned on. It's not the way the majority said that they were going to operate, but they have operated with this type of policy since the day that we got here, since Senate File 1. It is now time to stop. It is now time to fess up. It is now time to do the right thing. Send this bill back, strip this provision, and let's move forward and finish the session. Thank you, Madam President. Senator Pappas. Thank you, Madam President. And members, I also support the, the last motion to send this bill back to conference committee to strip out this language. And I, I want to just applaud the wide variety of people from multiple faith communities that care very deeply about how we treat the strangers among us. They, I want to thank them for welcoming and for standing with our Minnesota immigrants. It's been very impressive to see how much the people of Minnesota really care about this issue and care about our Minnesota immigrants. I also want to make clear that this bill doesn't create a path for legal licenses. That door is already shut. But what this, do, what this does do is this language not only shuts the door, but it puts a padlock on it. Further discussion to the last motion. Senator Lemmer. Thank you, Madam President. Well, we're having a lot of discussion about this particular clause in the bill. And I'd like to uh, give a little explanation of why I think it's a good policy. Uh, the first issue is driver licenses and driver safety is the purview of the judiciary and crime prevention subject that we have in this bill today. Public safety is certainly a, a primary purpose of the bill. Uh, but I wouldn't think that it's such a padlock on policy as some people would like to think. Um, we are addressing a department's responsibility versus the legislative responsibility. If this department did not have this responsibility to consider this provision, and right now the current status of this driver license policy is the, is the same as what we're proposing in this bill. But I'd like you to know that it's not a prohibition. It simply takes the authority and puts it in our hands. Now, again, we've done this before on other, other bills. You might remember, you might remember the real ID prohibition. We had prohibited the Department of Public Safety not to get involved in policy making on the Real ID Bill, and it was intentionally created so that it would fall in our hands. And yes, there was a little friction on that. Uh, there was rather universal uh, appeal to move in the direction of the Real ID, Real ID idea this year 
uh, and despite the opposition of myself and a few others, that bill was passed. And that, bill, that bill moved in a direction that nine years ago, every member except one in this body voted to prohibit Real ID. This particular portion of the bill would leave this decision in the hands of the legislature. Now perhaps the makeup of the legislature is not to everyone's liking, but you and I both know that legislative fortunes change very often. And uh, I just want us to think about that as we make this next decision. Because there is a little bit of fate involved in where this policy might go. Senator Devil. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Madam President, uh, uh, we've spoken to, um, a number of us have spoken, including myself, have spoken to why we think um, this is just a, a bad idea, it takes a gratuitous swipe at uh, members of our community, it's totally unnecessary in this bill, it's been rejected. Uh, this idea has been rejected already by this chamber. Um, but, but Madam President, um, if, you, uh, if you look to the language uh, of, of the provision, um, it's important for us to be aware that there are, uh, it's, it's fairly broadly wit written. I mean, we know who's targeted and who's, who's in the crosshairs and what the intention is. Um, and, and so in the zeal to target a particular community and, and make it a function of statute rather than a rule that they have no access to driver's license for whatever reason people Madam have. President. Senator Pratt. Madam President, point of, uh, point of order. Uh, Senator, Senator your point. Uh, Dibble is uh, inferring intent against Senate rules, and I would ask him to uh, uh, refrain and keep his comments more objective. Thank you, Senator Pratt. And Senator Dibble, I would remind you to be careful and stick to the subject at hand and speak to the, the conference committee report rejection motion that is on the floor. Madam President, I don't think I spoke to intent. Um, if people perceive that I did, I apologize um, if, if that uh, is the case. I disagree with the characterization of my comments. But Madam President, um, the way the, uh, the rules are written, um, it is a blanket prohibition on the Department of Public Safety in amending uh, any rules uh, pertaining to a uh, driver's license. Uh, you recall that we just passed the Real ID Bill, and in fact, there may be a need uh, to amend uh, some rules in the implementation uh, of Real ID, and this is a complete prohibition uh, on any DPS rulemaking that would change existing uh, driver's license. So, in fact, uh, uh, you know, there's language that says uh, any law um, to the contrary notwithstanding, uh, and this, this prohibition on the ability for uh, DPS to, to change rules um, is in place. Um, so, uh, Madam President, uh, I think we, many of us agree that uh, Real ID is something that uh, is desirable and needs to be put in place, and um, I think it's well accepted that, in fact, the Department of Public Safety uh, uh, may have to uh, undergo some changes to the rules uh, in, our, in the administration uh, of, our, of, our, of extending driver's license. And so um, I think that uh, there was a rush to judgment and, uh, and that uh, we wrote this, uh, this language a little uh, too quickly uh, and didn't consider these unintended consequences. And so we would have the opportunity uh, to clear those matters up, uh, either completely eliminate uh, this provision, which I think is, is the desirable course of action, or at a minimum, uh, make sure that it's cleaned up and written uh, with a little more precision so that, that we're not interfering with an, yet another action that we've taken as a body and as a legislature uh, and as a state. Secretary will take the role on the uh, the the LATS motion to reject the conference committee report.
All those senators having voted who desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 30 ayes and 36 nays, the amendment or the motion is not adopted. We are back to the Limmer motion to accept the conference committee report. Senator, Senator Ingebrigtsen. Thank you, Madam President and members. I just want to make a few comments with regards to the uh, bill before us. The conference committee report from the Senate Judiciary Public Safety. Uh, I serve on this committee, however, I did not serve in a conference committee, and I must say that members uh, that serve on this committee are very, very thoughtful, very deliberative, and do a tremendous job in moving legislation forward. And, and I want to thank Senator Limmer and, and Senator Latz and, and the other members for their thoughtful bill that's been put together today. And when we're talking about public safety, I must thank these, uh, these folks for the amount of funding that was gone in here for the, the public safety practitioners that uh, uh, are in Minnesota that are protecting us day and night, 24 hours a day, um, and the troubles that they've had and been having in the, in the past and, and dealing with those situations moving forward. And I know the governor's had an initiative to look for more training dollars for law enforcement, and this bill reflects that. We have $12 million, new million dollars, $12 million worth of law enforcement officer training. Members, that's a lot of money. Uh, being a former sheriff, I remember what officers would get paid, and excuse me, not paid, but what they would get credit from the post board. And that list was brought to the uh, uh, Judiciary Committee this year, and I was actually appalled at the, the amount of resources that had, had been going, uh, the lack of resources that have been going towards the training of our officers in the state of Minnesota. We have some of the best trained officers in the country. And we need to stay with that. And this bill reflects the governor's intent as well as the uh, committee's intent to do just that. We have $6.3 million to strengthen the supervision of offenders on probation members. That is a good thing. $4.1 million to rebuild the predatory offender registration system. $3 million for critical Department of Corrections technology updates. Remember, these are dollars that, that are well spent. $2.7 million for the BCA, more agents to assist in complex narcotics, homicide investigations, forensic firearms exams, drug chemistry, forensic scientists, and criminal history systems maintenance staff. In order to stay on top of this stuff, officers out there need this assistance. They need to react right now, and we shouldn't expect anything less. $500,000 to combat terrorism recruitment. Now, we all know that the state of Minnesota, unfortunately, has been one of those states that have been identified as one of the states that uh, we have some recruitment issues for terrorists in this country. Uh, Senator Latz and I, I worked on an amendment with him a couple of years ago to address this. Uh, and I, so I know it's on everybody's mind, and I'm glad to see the funding in there. 360000 to combat sex trafficking. Uh, nothing new, but a very serious, ugly crime that's going on up and down our freeway corridors. And Minnesota is not exempt from this, members. $150,000 for nonprofits that are at risk for terrorist attacks. Once again, spending some dollars to try and identify those problems we have. $100,000 for reimbursement to Minnesota's expert bomb squads. Unfortunately, we need that too, members. That's really unfortunate. There's been some discussion tonight, obviously a lot of discussion with regards to the the uh, most recent amendment, but I want to mention a couple other things before I address that, and then I'm going to end it. Uh, there's talking about health care for prisoners, and I, I, as a former sheriff, was in charge of a jail that, that actually had 100, uh, over 100 beds, and, and, and I know that the health care for uh, is something, health care for prisoners is something that has to be addressed and is addressed and is under the guidance, counties are under the guidance of the Department of Corrections. And unfortunately, sometimes that's probably some of the best care that some of these people have had, 
is in county jails and, and probably in our state systems. Now, I'm not totally up on what the cost of is moving forward. I know there's some, certainly some increases that we have to deal with, and maybe there's some shortcomings there, but believe me, uh, at least I know in the county jails uh, the prisoners are being taken care of. Um, there's a good provision in here, I think, when we talked about off-duties, and we had some, some debate about that in the, uh, about uh, the off-duty carry uh, in the state of Minnesota. And, and members, I think this is a very good provision, and I, I, uh, I think I stated my case very well in the committee. Actually, I, was, I, I subbed for Senator Limmer on that particular bill when he, was no, when he wasn't able to be there, and we had a good discussion about the, uh, the NHL, of course, was one of the bigger discussions. But there was another discussion, and Senator Latz brought up this, and I think very thoughtfully so, about you would have officers coming and going off-duty to daycare facilities, dropping their children off, and you know that kind of struck as a struck a good a chord with me in that. Think about that, members. You've got an officer that may be on duty, dropping their child off in uniform with a with a weapon, and you may have a, have one coming there off-duty to pick up their child. Quite frankly, if I have a child or a grandchild in a place like that where there's an officer coming and going that has a, an off-duty weapon, I would feel pretty secure, or a lot more secure. Not, not the opposite it was, that it was portrayed. And I don't think I have to talk about whether it's needed in, in Minnesota or not. Not that long ago in St. Cloud at, at the mall, where there was an off-duty officer, and, and who knows today, members, what the outcome would have been if he would not have been there and reacted in the fashion that he did. Unfortunately, a young man was shot and fatally wounded, but many people were stabbed that, that day in St. Cloud. It was a horrible event, but who knows how many, would have been more, how many more would have been injured and what would have happened if he would have not been there to respond. The freeway protester bill is not in here. That was an initiative that I carried and had, I think, bipartisan support. I think that's something that we can work on over the uh, interim. I know Senator Hall has talked about uh, helping out with that, and I would encourage other members to, uh, to help out with that initiative moving forward. And then I talk about the last issue, and that's the, the driver's license uh, with regards to our illegal population here in Minnesota. And, and I'm not going to belabor this. Uh, I, I know I do, I do have to go out to my, my residence out in rural Minnesota, and, and uh, if I'm asked, do we or did we afford the opportunity for somebody who is illegally here in this country, the opportunity to have a driver's license in Minnesota with this bill, I can tell them the only way that's going to happen is it's going to have to come from the legislature, not from from a commissioner that, that, that is in charge of rules. And so I'll, my answer will be no. At this point in time, uh, somebody who here is, is illegally here cannot legally get a driver's license. And that's a reasonable answer, and that's an answer that my residents will expect to hear from me as a lawmaker. We are a country of rules. So members, this is a good bill. I encourage you to support it. It addresses law enforcement, I think, in a tremendous fashion. and. Uh, uh, again, I'd ask for your support. Further discussion on the Limmer motion. Senator Schoen. Thank you, Madam President. And I, did, I think we're kind of skipping over one very important piece of this. I know that Senator Latz did highlight it, but it's about responsible budgeting. And in this particular uh, proposal, the uh, health contract, uh, health contract for DOC, uh, provides eleven million four hundred thousand for one year of the biennium. It totally ignores the second year of the biennium, and I, I, I really struggle with the Minnesota Senate moving forward with an ir irresponsible uh, level of budgeting like that. Uh, I know that uh, I think we could have done better with this. I also struggle with uh, an individual, as an individual who served on a violent crime task force, that we didn't uh, provide the financing for that. Those, uh, the dollars spent on those task forces around the state of Minnesota have a great amount of return in public safety uh, protection 
for communities all over our state by sharing agents, sharing officers, and the resources that they do. And I, I don't think that would have been too far of a stress, stretch for us to make that happen. So I do find that difficult that we didn't do that. I do want to highlight a couple things. Just, just talking about this uh, off-duty officer piece in the NFL, I, you know, I, I, everybody gets so focused on, on it's the gun. And I've heard uh, Senator Ingebrigtsen talk about, you know, I want him to have the gun there. Yeah, I don't have, I want an officer there. I want somebody well trained there. Those are the people who are, uh, can be in those large venues. I, I'm a co author on the bill. I'm good with it. The number one issue here is, though, these are people that are highly trained. This shouldn't be everybody in the world walking into a, a place with 100,000 people. Uh, you need to be highly trained because those individuals have to make decisions, especially when not to shoot and control emotions. That's what law enforcement officers do. They do that and they train and train and train. So it's not just about let's get guns everywhere. Just make sure that people have the training to do what they need to do and do it responsibly. And that one does it. Thank you. Seeing no other discussion, discussion, Senator Limmer moves that the foregoing recommendations and conference committee report on House File 470 be now adopted and that the bill be repassed as amended by the conference committee. All in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. The motion is adopted. Secretary will give House File 470 its third reading. House File Number 470, a bill for an act relating to public safety, modifying certain provisions relating to courts, public safety, corrections, crime, and controlled substances. Third reading. Senator Dibble. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, I just wanted to highlight a couple of other quick points before uh, Senator Linmer uh, wraps up. Um, uh, with his final comments before our final vote. Just a couple of uh, elements. Uh, you know, there, like Senator Torres Ray uh, said earlier, um, uh, would have been proud to, to vote for uh, many elements of this bill. Uh, some were highlighted uh, by uh, Senator Latz and, and Senator Limmer. Um, and so I think it's a, a shame that we were leaving the provision in that we discussed earlier, um, uh, codifying the uh, prohibition of of driver's license for those who lack legal presence. But I also just wanted to articulate uh, my regret um, that the Office of Justice Programs uh, at the uh, Department of Public Safety uh, once again uh, gets such short shrift. A number of extremely good uh, programs are administered out that that go a long way towards um, helping folks in, in, on a wide variety of areas that relate to uh, justice services. Uh, and we talk a lot, of course, about youth intervention programs and, and how how much um, uh, those help us avoid a lot of future costs and, and we don't do anything uh, for the youth in intervention programs. Also, um, uh, members, uh, the, the pipeline and rail assessment uh, is allowed to sunset. Uh, this is a, uh, an assessment. Uh, this simply requires our railroad companies uh, who have been uh, growing by leaps and bounds and posting uh, record profits over the last number of years and, um, and uh, uh, are, of course, presenting a tremendous public safety challenge in our communities and for our drivers. First of all, I don't quite understand why it's in this bill and not the transportation bill, but um, uh, this is a very, very modest assessment that allows us around the state to improve uh, grade crossings, and uh, uh, this initiative is allowed to sunset, and so we won't have those resources to improve those grade crossings uh, as, as we see uh, the railroads enter into a uh, a renaissance, uh, the likes of which they haven't seen for, for many, many years as we convert a lot of the shipping and freight hauling that we do uh, in our economy to freight. Uh, and so I think that is also regrettable, Madam President. Senator Lemmer, oh, Senator Latz, excuse me. Uh, Madam President, this bill could have been oh so much better. It's really a lost opportunity. In a year, in a biennium, when we have a one and a half billion dollar surplus. And yeah, you're going to hear this over and over again with every budget bill because the same principle applies to every budget bill before us. We could have done oh so much more with the resources that we have in the state of Minnesota to make the state even better than it is. 
Civil legal services provide services to those who can't afford to hire private lawyers in the parts of their life when they're facing legal crises, not the criminal kinds of cases, but when they are getting divorced or having child custody battles or when they're being evicted from their apartment, when they are facing collection problems and they have nowhere to turn and they don't know how to handle the situation, experienced lawyers are there to help them. And we are all better off as a society when they receive that help. Not just because, oh, but for the grace of God go I, but also because we are better off when we are all better off. Because we are a community and what happens in one part of it affects every other part of the community. We had an opportunity this year to make game-changing investments in civil legal services to help them provide the services to more people that need it and who qualify financially, meaning they are poor enough to be deemed not capable of hiring their own private lawyer. And members, we could have made oh so much more of an investment in crime prevention. This is an area of the bill where when we have resources available, we should pour it in. Because when you make investments in preventing crime, you save costs of incarceration 5, 10, 20 years down the road. From a pure cost-benefit analysis, they are worthwhile investments. And it's not just the youth inter intervention programs, which are incredibly valuable, but it, as Senator Dibble said, is so much of what the Office of Justice Programs does. That's our prime place for preventing people, young people and others, from turning to lives of crime, committing crimes. And one way we do that for those who are already in the criminal justice system is to provide mental health services for those who are incarcerated. Now, not only is it the humane thing to do, but we need to stabilize these people and get them treatment for what are often multiple issues, chemical dependency, victimization as, as uh, they were victimized as abuse victims when they were growing up. And they need counseling and they need treatment and often they need medication for their mental health issues. We put no additional funding into that population in our system here. And again, the driver's license issues relating to those who are present in our society, who are paying taxes in our community and who are provide services to all of us, but whom we still refuse to allow to drive legally on our roads. As a practical matter, we expect much from them, but we provide them with not even some of the basic tools to, to live and provide for themselves and their families. And yeah, you can say, well, they shouldn't be here anyway, but the fact is they're here. We ought to make the best of it until we figure out a better solution. We're all safer if they're driving safely. And the provision in this bill makes it that path toward that result that much harder to get to. I really wish I could vote for this bill. But it is a lost opportunity, a lost opportunity that we could have taken advantage of, but we will not because of the targets in this bill and because of some of the policy in this bill. And for those reasons, members, I urge you to vote no. Senator Franzen. Thank you, Madam President. I think most uh, of the arguments have been made, and I just have to share just my own perspective of why I'm voting no for this bill. Uh, Senator Limmer, I know you've worked really hard on this and I, I'm not looking for someone to blame, uh, but I do have to explain why I will not be voting for this bill really briefly. And uh, You mentioned um, when we were talking about the controversial policy provision that was included in this bill on driver's license, you said that that was good policy, Senator Limmer uh, and Madam President. That's exactly what's wrong with this bill. We're on a budget session, and we're supposed to be focused on the budget, yet we have 
controversial policy provisions in most of these bills, and this is one that I cannot support. And frankly, members, if we were focused on the budget and not on controversial policy, we'd probably be out of here on time at midnight, but we are heading to a special session. So with that, members, I cannot vote for this bill, even though there is a lot of good things and good budget provisions here, but let's keep the policy out. And I know that our, our governor has been saying that over and over again, and I wish we would have focused on the budget versus on controversial policy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Senator Lemmer. Thank you, Madam President. And I'd like to thank the members for a very respectful conversation about this budget proposal and some of the issues that we have before us. Uh, just a few comments. Um, I'd like to thank our members of the conference committee. Uh, if you've ever had to deal with the House uh, confer conferees, uh, you know that you're in for a pretty tough time and a rather exhaustive session uh, with them. And um, in many ways, I wish you would have participated in all the other discussions and issues that we had to vet on behalf of what they, the lower house down the hall, uh, brought forward in this particular bill. And we uh, rejected quite a few of them, simply because we did not think they vetted the issue enough. Uh, so it's not as though we are shirking any responsibility. I want to thank our members of that particular committee. That's Senator Johnson, uh, Mark Johnson, Bruce Anderson, Senator Relf, and despite our occasional difference, I want to thank Senator Latz, a very good member who helped create the vetting of many of those issues that directed our path on that particular uh, conference committee. Uh, as for, oh, we also have others, uh, Chris Turner, Ken Backus, our researchers, Linnea Michelson, Angela Cook, Lily Whittle, and least I forget uh, DFL researcher Charlie Bruce, uh, who was there just as long as we were. And so, uh, not to mention, uh, well, I don't want to mention the House researchers. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, one other thing, and I know that uh, our conversation did focus on a particular provision. Um, I want everyone to know that I personally embrace immigration. And I think everyone here does. I don't think that's the issue. I think we all come from some type of immigrant roots. Uh, but in this society that we have, likewise, we all must encourage and embrace the rule of law as well. I hope this is seen as a respectful representation of this conversation. and. Um, I would certainly appreciate your vote on this particular bill. Thank you. The Secretary will take the roll on House File 470.
All those senators having voted who desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 46 ayes and 21 nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to.